our mortgages are on the line here. And I said, look, I, uh, I like to take risks, and that's what I'm about, so let me do it. It's interesting about you personally. You have no fear of change, whereas three-quarters of the Western world is terrified of the devil they don't know. Well, I, I've always thought of myself as a, um, a rising star, as it were, someone who uh, came from lowly um, beginnings, if you like. And so I like change because every time I've changed, it's been for the better. Um, and not just materially, I mean uh, spiritually and in, in, in the sense of my character's grown because of change. So I, I embrace it and I love it. Why are the critics so quick to say that you change, that you reinvent yourself, that you are chameleon-esque? Because that's, that's my, uh, my game plan. I, I, I love doing it. I think once people have decided what you are, once they've labeled you with a great big stamp here, then that's it. You have no freedom and you're constantly being told what you are. I, I like the ability just to be what I like, whether it's, you know, I think I have a pretty ambiguous image. And people aren't quite sure whether I'm a nice guy or a, or a, a devil. And I think that, you know, it's, it's freedom for me. I don't want to be known that well. But Sting, why let a camera even though it's your camera that you have commissioned, why let a camera come into your life that way? Why would you do that? Well, uh, um, cameras and uh, publicity and being famous are part of my life. And the game that is played is that you, you allow people to see enough of you to, uh, to be attractive, but not enough to uh, scare them away. And that's my life. I have, when I walk out on the street, I'm playing that game. When I, I, I talk to you, I'm playing that game. When I make records, I'm playing this game. I'm inviting scrutiny. I'm inviting observation. At the same time, I'm wondering whether I can uh, survive it. I don't provide much, many of the laughs in the film. I'm, I'm too busy and too worried during the film to be uh, Mr. Funny. But my band are so spontaneous. And there's a gaiety about them that is, is, is so engaging. You know, <laughs> And they Setback. horse around. They have <laughs> such, they poke such fun at you. You laugh at it. Does that loosen you up? It's what I need, basically. I think the whole process of being a successful rock star is kind of deifying, you know. God speaks. Um, having a band like that, where they, uh, they really take it out of me a lot, is good for me. And uh, they do it out of, out of affection. They don't do it out of anything else. And uh, I love them. I felt I had to make a journey in the music I was making. And I wanted musicians who also had to make a journey. And I chose the best. I think I got the best drummer, the best sax player, the best bass player, and the best keyboard player. And uh, when I turned around, I realized they were all black. <laughs> and I'm becoming black. <laughs> I'm starting to, to speak like that. It's, it's very strange. But also, I think something's rubbing off of me onto them, and it's great. I'm trying to uh, change uh, what the archetypal rock star is for myself, for my own sense of dignity. Um, I think it's a pejorative term normally, you know, rock star. What does it mean? It means someone you don't want to invite to dinner, really. Um, not that I'm the kind of person you really want to invite to dinner either, but I, I want to be unique. I'd hate to be the age of 40 and wearing uh, tight satin trousers and screaming with my hair on. I, I wouldn't want to be that, but I want to sing for the rest of my life and therefore I have to make what I do dignified. The excitement and the adrenaline rush of going out in front of uh, maybe 70,000 people screaming in anticipation for you to come out is irreplaceable. And there's nothing quite like it. Meryl Streep came to, to the concert the other night and came backstage after it and said, God, I envy you. <laughs> because, you know, in, in film, you don't have an audience. You have a director who says, yeah, that's great or try again on the stage in front of all those people. It's, it's, there's nothing like it. I suppose being a, a politician or being the leader of some, some country at war would be the same. But, uh, you know, what I do is, is harmless in a way, and it's not like being a politician. At the same time, it's just as gratifying. And the power, and I'll be candid, it's power. You feel a sense of power. Suppose there are some critics of this film quick to say that it was a very self-serving thing for you to do. Um, I'm sure it will be said. Um, I'm sure that there'll be a negative attitude towards it somewhere. 
I can only say that it, that it was an honest attempt to show how a band worked. And I wasn't trying to uh, glorify myself. No, I wasn't doing that. I didn't. You know, I, I think what we see in the film is me. Or what I allow. <laughs> Some people say tense. Some people say very preoccupied. I saw you in a large group, and I would not have approached you if hell froze over because there's a certain authoritative, really back-off attitude that'll let me know that you were not fair game. Um, I'm not sure whether I'm um, austere out of, out of arrogance or shyness, and I think it's probably a bit, a bit of both. I think I am arrogant, but... Um, I do have my moments of humility. Sensed in the film a slight desire to instruct, to elucidate. Do you think that goes <laughs> back to when you were a school teacher? I, I'm still a school teacher. Once, you're, once you've been put in front of a class of, of children, you never lose that sort of, um, well, sit down and listen, will you? Um, it's something I'm fighting against, really, because I don't think there's any such thing as a teacher. I think uh, the phenomena in the classroom is learning, and the teacher is merely an enthusiast. I had the biggest laugh when I realized you were a school teacher to nine-year-olds. I thought, somewhere in this world, there's an entire class of kids that have grown up and said, oh, Sting, yeah, he was my teacher in third grade. I mean, that's a funny notion. Absolutely. Ever run into any of them? Um, I sometimes get letters from a couple of them, and uh, they tell me what they're doing. <laughs> they're spelling good. Oh, their spelling's great, thank God. <laughs> Nothing to do with me. You don't correct their letters and send it back. <laughs> I correct most people's letters when they write to me, but... Um... Say, see me after the concert. <laughs> <laughs> Dot your eyes. There's so many contradictions about you. Do you ever confuse yourself? I think we're all full of contradictions. To deny the contradictions is to lose power over evil. I think um, if one considers oneself to be good, totally good, then one can't control evil impulses. And as soon as you lose this vision of yourself as being a, an angel and a devil, or a contradictory um, image, then you're lost. You become mad. To think yourself completely good is madness. To think yourself completely bad is also madness. To think yourself both is sanity. Are you surprised and or pleased? I haven't mentioned the word police once. Yeah, I, I am pleased because it, it, this year, 1985, it, it's not an issue. We're not, you know, we uh, had our big success as the police in 1984. I think all of us, as members of the, of the of the police, feel we don't want to be bonded together by panic. You know, it's not so oh God, we can't do anything. We'll have to get back as a group. I think if we did that, I think we'd fail miserably. I think um, the whole point of being a band is that you have a confidence about it. You know. You're such a young man, Stan. You are in a hurry. Why? I don't know. None of us are guaranteed, uh, um, you know, 67 years. You, you could all die tomorrow. And uh, I sort of eat, eat every meal as if it's my last. And um, I, I like living that way. It's exciting. Do you ever miss Gordon Summer and simpler, less complicated days? No. No, I think, uh, I think I'm happier now than I've ever been.